you guys have heard me talk about this before on the show. Big time players make big time plays in big time moments. Today, we're talking to the state champion point guard from Meridian High School here out of Idaho. And we're going to be talking about how number 30 will do you dirty. He's going to share all the tips and tricks, talk about his career uh, through high school, what it took to win a state championship, what he's learned through successes and failures, and much more. You don't want to miss this episode of the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Boom! This is the Game Time Guru podcast where I interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports. So whether you're a former athlete, one of the crazies, or simply a casual sports fan, this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. I am your host, Shane Larson, and I uh, want to give a massive shout out to the listeners so far. Uh, this show is four and a half years and counting, and we are just so grateful for the growth of the show. And it's due in large part to the listeners and all those who have supported the show. Whether this is your first time listening or you've been a long time listener, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Massive shout out to the title sponsor, local guys out of here in uh, Meridian, Idaho. That's 208 Printing. If you guys have any printing needs that, you know, whether you want to get merch done and be a walking billboard, you know, get your hats done, your, your, your shirts, your jerseys, whatever it may be. If it's a business need, go to 208 Printing. They'll get you taken care of. Their website is actually made by 208.com. Um, or you can reach out to me in a personal message. I'll get you in contact with the owners. Those guys are awesome. They're always helping me out and they'll help you guys out as well. So on the show. We've been bringing on a lot of different uh, different sports figures from different levels. It doesn't matter where. But recently, in the last couple of weeks, we focused more so on some, some of the local athletes. Um, and, and, we, and we did that for a reason. We want to spotlight some of these guys uh, because they know what it takes to compete at a high level. And today's no different. We're going to be bringing on the state champion uh, point guard out of Meridian High School. His name is McKay Anderson, and we're going to be learning from him. So, McKay, thanks so much for joining the show, man. No problem. Happy to be here. Super excited to have you, bro. It, it, it's it's been a long time coming for me because I've I've been watching you from afar, which sounds kind of weird and awkward, but like just always watching as I followed Meridian's program the last couple of years specifically, and then this year, obviously, you guys broke to the top. But I've always been um, amazed at your type of play. And for those who are listening right now, McKay's style of play is he's a leader by example and he's kind of quiet you're like the silent assassin out there um so i want to get to know a little bit more about your background mckay before we even get to your senior year when we talk about the state state championship run that you guys had the historic season at meridian let's talk about your your upbringing as far as sports are concerned did you play basketball your whole life like what was your your childhood like growing up did you play multiple sports or was it mainly focused on basketball yeah i've uh I've been always played basketball since since I can remember, very young age, and also I played uh, baseball and football all through growing up through middle school. So I've just been I've been around sports my whole life. But my favorite has been basketball. Always been around that. My older brothers playing basketball in high school, and my dad just always been around the game and always had a love for it. And just it's uh, been a deeper love than the other sports that I ended up quitting. So basketball I can, just one out i i can relate to uh to that um you know a lot of us can in a sense like the the love i like that you said you have a deeper love for it and love runs deeper for basketball than the other ones i was football player everybody said i should have played continue i would have gone d1 yada 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 the whole shebang i was built more for football than i was but my love for basketball is so it was it was bigger than it was for the other sports so i get that um and and, and it's it's awesome to watch your progression through the sport of basketball but i am curious when you were growing up did you follow any nba teams or was there any players that you enjoyed watching as you were, you know, coming up, um, getting older and older? Yeah, I've always, I've always been a Phoenix Suns fan since that was the first team I started liking. And my favorite player on that team was Steve Nash. So I've tried to on the game after his a little bit with just being a floor general and finding the right people and scoring when necessary and just really follow my game a lot after him and stayed with the Suns. Love. Evan Booker now, Chris Paul, especially his year right now. It's awesome to have on our team. So, yeah, it's just been the Phoenix Suns for me all the group. 
That's actually <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now that I'm. Uh, <laughs> if you ever watch McKay play, <clears throat> Steve Nash. That totally makes sense now. Holy cow. Okay, so yeah, that's 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 a very, very smooth comparison because the way you play McKay is, is very similar in that regard. You are a floor general. And then even Chris Paul, uh, you just mentioned Chris Paul, the veteran who's over there with the Suns, leading that team to an awesome season so far. Um, it's kind of cool because those are some elite point guards, good ones to kind of you know study and see how they play the game. You know, one of the things I want to ask you about, McKay, in the sport of basketball, floor general, Okay, you're a point guard, an, an elite one at that. Being a floor general, what does that mean? You hear that term a lot, and a lot of coaches will say, you know, you need to be a floor general, you need to be a floor general. What does that mean to you? How do you be a floor general? Uh, I think being a floor general is a little bit of everything. Like, you come down the floor, you got to get everybody in the right spot, be commanding with your voice and get everybody into the offense. Um facilitating the ball, getting it to the right player, the player that's hot, the player that needs the ball, has a size advantage, you know, um, taking care of the ball, not turning the ball over and shooting when open and knocking down easy shots. Just kind of that little bit of everything thing, just being kind of in charge of the team, being in charge of every single possession. Like you're, you're there and you're going to be, Tell me what to do and, you know, that aspect. And to piggyback off of that, then that's a really good answer. I mean, you got to do a little bit of everything. You got it. That's the point of being a floor general means you are commanding the offense in a lot of ways. Uh, it might be scoring. It might be getting you being able to understand who's hot right there. So how do we get the ball in that player's hands? What sets do we need to run? You know, being vocal, getting everybody set up properly, all those things. The preparation to be able to be prepared for those moments, though, what would you say your preparations like, McKay, like in a like, let's say you're in season. How do you prepare? How does one prepare to be ready for that to, so that they can command their team when the time comes? Well, I think it starts with, um, first of all, as simple as knowing all your sets and knowing you don't need to know every specific position, but knowing like the the point of the play and we're trying to get out of the play. So if you're trying to get an open three in the corner knowing where every person is going to go and you can help them out there. Um, just getting the right mindset before the game that you have to be the leader for the game. You got to be all mentally there the whole game. You got to be mentally prepared. Coming into the game, telling people where to be and go with the game flow. And it just starts with uh, preparing yourself mentally before and becoming a leader. I dig that. One of the things I've noticed um, from following your guys' high school program the last couple of years, especially this this season, um, where you guys only had one loss and it was at a buzzer beater. So, I mean, it was a very, very big game at local rival school for those who are listening outside of Idaho. Rocky Mountain and Meridian are literally within two miles of each other, three miles of each other, right down the street. Um, big time rivals. <clears throat> and I was at that game. I was actually calling that game on the NFHS network. And... Uh, even that loss, I mean, it, what what's crazy about, like, you guys had a great season. What, what, I, what I loved about your team, though, was how together you guys were. And you could sense that last year, too. But even, you know, coming into this year was even more so that, that fact. You guys were so together. Um, you guys played we basketball. Uh, coach George Carl, the Hall of Fame coach, uh, head coach that, you know, he coached the Sonics, he coached the Bucks, he coached the Nuggets. I mean, he's he's been around a long time in the NBA and I was just listening to an uh, interview of his with his son, Kobe Carl, and uh, he was talking about Wii basketball. Well, that's what I that's what I think of when I was thinking about Meridian High School. You guys played Wii basketball. So I want you to give us a little bit of an insight there. You know, you are the floor general, the commander of the team. How did your practices look like? How did you guys get to that point where literally you were so tight knit as a unit that you did not get rattled? Even in that game that you lost you guys weren't rattled. You weren't necessarily playing the best offensively, in my opinion. I thought that you guys were, you know, missing some shots that probably could have gone in a, a normal day. But you kept fighting to the point where you literally were in position to win that game a couple of times, you know. Mm -hmm. And so even then, you were already in position to win. Obviously, you stayed together. You you weathered storms together. Uh, district championship is another great example where you guys were getting, you know, punched straight in the face from the beginning, and then you guys weathered the storm and came together. What, what was it like to be able to, like, how did you guys do that? I, I just want to know a little bit of insight as how you guys came together as a team to be so tight-knit that you guys couldn't be broken. 
yeah that's a we were so together like the the whole year like we we just trusted each other was that the word i was looking for there um we just had a different level of trust than any other team i've ever been on we were always there for each other i trusted everybody on the floor with me to make the right play and um stick it out with me so i knew if we weren't having a great game uh, my teammates were still going to fight and do whatever they can to win and when you know you got teammates that are going to do that for you you're going to want to do it for them and so you're just going to keep fighting competing and it's not for yourself it's really for your teammates it's for the people around you because you want them to be successful and win so badly that you're going to keep working and keep competing to try and win for them it was all about trusting each other and just wanting it for each other trust I love that. I think uh, for all the listeners out there, whether you're a parent, a coach, and maybe you're an athlete yourself on a team right now, um, trust that that comes with you know showing up for one another. Each 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 person each person has to trust each other, and you gain someone's trust by being able to you know know where you're supposed to be on certain sets, and you prove that to each other. But trusting each other is such a big aspect. I think so often in basketball now, and any sport for that matter, um, it's a lot about me me, me, me. And like, you don't necessarily trust if the play breaks down. Some people just start going ISO ball and they just, they, they lose that trust. When you have that trust, it's obvious it works. It's the recipe for success. Cause you guys did that. You guys stayed together. It was unbelievable to watch like how together you guys were, even the guys on the bench, they were up in a season that was unprecedented, which was super awkward with the pandemic, like sitting six feet apart from each other on the bench. Don't even get me started with how awkward that was to me. I just thought it was so unnecessary. You're out there playing ball yet. You have to sit. sit. It was the dumbest thing. Um, but you guys were still loud and you were getting up there and there was very few fans that were allowed in games, but you guys didn't, you didn't let that stop you. You guys were staying together. You were loud as awkward as it may have been in some of those gyms. You guys did what you were trained to do and what you guys practiced. And I thought it was super, super cool. Now we're going to talk more about yourself though. Cause see you, like I said, you're the silent assassin. And when, when, when we were covering the state championship basketball game, we were talking to Lake city's, um, sophomore forward, Blake Buchanan afterwards. And, you know, I was talking to Blake they came out of the locker room first and he'd be okay with me telling you about this because at first he's like, man, we had game plan for, for Roebury and we were trying to do all we could against him, but we didn't know 30 was going to go off. They didn't know your name. They called you 30. And I thought it was hilarious. I was like, dude, that's the thing is, is you guys, that's where you made your mistake in your game preparation is the problem with Meridian is yeah. 30 can go off at any moment. I was like, McKay can go off at any moment. And you proved that in the district championship, which I want to, explain here i've talked about it before on my show for those listening Kay anderson in the district championship game your four point play at the end of the third quarter it it was one of the most you have you have an ability to to step up in big games i say big time players make big time plays in big time moments and that's one of the things that you have is you're just a big time player making big time plays in big time moments district championship four point play at the end I mean, it was unbelievable. At the end of the third quarter, you guys were getting punched in the face, and you guys had a, a one-minute spurt at the end of the third quarter where you guys had a nine-nothing run at the end of the third quarter. Like, are you kidding me? Like, in one minute, you had a nine-nothing run. You ended up taking the lead, and then you kept that momentum going in to win it, due in large part to yourself. And then in the state championship game, you had 19 of your 23 in the first half, and uh, go a figure, another four point. Unbelievable how you were able to step up, and they they were saying how they just weren't prepared for you. So. When it comes to those big time moments, you're in these championship games, which not every athlete gets to play. Uh, you were blessed to be able to be in these high pressure situations. How do you go about it? Like, what is it in your mind, McKay, that just takes you to that next level where you're like, okay, I got this? Um, again, I think a lot of it comes from trust from my from my teammates. Because I got teammates that I know trust me to do my thing and compete at my level and I just got good teammates who are going to find me in their opportunities and they're going to know when I'm getting hot and when I need the ball and um, uh, throughout my whole life just playing in big games I've had a lot of opportunities to play in bigger games in baseball I went to the World Series a couple times when I was younger and in different sports too I've just had opportunities to have big games so I've, I've been in a lot of high pressure games and I've learned to just relax and let my, let my game take over and just do my thing. And, um, I think another big 
it comes down to is just playing free. Because a lot of times um, when I struggle, I, I'm thinking too much and worrying about what if I miss this shot. But it just comes down to I know what I can do. I've practiced this before. I've been here before. I'm just going to play my game and trust myself. And it all just seems to work out for me just playing free and doing my thing. I love that. Playing free. That's going to be a staple phrase here for those who are listening, playing free. And that comes with, you know, preparation too. you can't just play free. If you're not preparing prior to that, like you got to put in the work outside of ball to, you know, have that muscle memory and just have the, you know, the confidence in yourself, just play free. But I want to read from Brandon Walton's article in scoreboardlive.com. I sat next to Brandon during the state tournament the entire time. And he was talking about the adversity you guys faced against Lake city in the state championship. So for those who might look at the score, they might be like, oh, well, they blew them out. No, it was actually a pretty solid game, tough matchup at first with a couple of things you guys had to lay with, you know, you deal with, with adversity. And Brandon said, after Lake City took a 28 to 27 lead on a lay-in by sophomore Blake Buchanan with 510 left in the second quarter, Anderson scored nine of the Warriors' final 13 points of the half, including a personal 6-0 run to give them a 40 to 32 advantage at the break. I just want to, I want to break this down. You were down 28 to 27, five minutes to go in the half. You led 40 to 32 at halftime. Anybody who's listening, there you go. There's the there. That's how quickly you personally were able to, you know, playing free and doing your thing, were able to take over and shift the momentum of that game because that truly was it. That was I remember I got sick because I was screaming so loud. I went up in the stands to to cheer because I didn't want to cover it down there being unprofessional, like sitting on the baseline yeah. <laughs> screaming and, you know, in the media section. So I went up in the, I got sick that whole next week. I was sick as a dog because I lost my voice. I, my nerves were shot, but I remember almost blacking out because you were torching them. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs that I got tunnel vision, almost blacked out. Like I was, I was going crazy. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. McKay, like you are a top high level, like high quality basketball player the, the that's why that's why they were taken off guard they're just like what is going on we can't stop this dude because you can score you can shoot you can facilitate you you penetrate you're not scared to go and get buckets in the middle of the key uh you know what you're doing um and that comes with preparation which brings me to my next point i want to know what's it like for you because you you've you've helped your team out so much in championship games bringing championships to meridian high school but what is it like for you for preparation outside of practice? What kind of work are you putting in on the basketball court? Um, usually during the season, um, after practice, I like to go to uh, my, uh, my church nearby and put up more shots after practice. So I usually put up about uh, 150 to 200 a night after practice. Um, just getting game like reps in and uh, doing some ball handling drills. And uh, during like uh, off days, I usually get up about 200 shots. And again, being there a little longer though, because I don't have to worry about the strain of practice and games and stuff. So I could uh, really work harder and uh, just putting shots coming and getting game like reps in is the most important thing because if you're coming in and you're getting up, you're just throwing up shots that you're not going to shoot in the game. You're not getting any better. It's a waste of time. So I come in and I really like to have a purpose and um, know what I'm going to do before I even get there, know what type of shots I want to practice and ball handling I want to practice. And so I just uh, like to come in with a, a purpose every time I go to the gym and just putting in the, the work after after practice is, was a big help for me throughout the season. It showed. It showed. And, and, I, and I love that you mentioned not only shooting, because the shooting is obviously you can shoot the ball. And one of the toughest things about you is I can imagine as a defender, I would hate guarding you because in transition, you're trying to get back on like a three on two. You're at a disadvantage on defense. And so you're like, okay, well, I'll wait till he comes into the key. Nope. Pop up from three. You're one of the few high school athletes that I've seen be able to consistently hit transition threes. That's a hard shot. And I'm a shooter, but that's a very, very hard shot coming full speed, pop and stop, and then be able to get your balance and shoot and nail it. So like, you are a very, very good shooter. You put the defense at a disadvantage anytime you have the ball in your hands. But you also mentioned ball handling. That's one of the things that stood out to me, McKay, when I watch you. It 
and it sounds like I'm a fanboy, but it's because I am. I'm like, my gosh, dude, this guy can like this guy. You, your your ability to keep your head up and dribble in traffic and and keep the, and, and bounce the ball behind your back. You're protecting the ball. You don't turn the ball over, but you have your head up at all times. All times. You're always looking to see what's going on. What when you when you go and do ball handling drills? What are some of those things that you are doing? You said game like reps, but how do you? prepare for that because you are literally one of the best facilitators because you are able to keep your head up the entire time you're dribbling the ball you don't look down you look up look up look up and that's what frustrates defenders they're like what in the frick is going on here i can't get the ball it's because you don't turn the ball over you just kind of go in there and do your thing it's a st- when you said steve nash that is what he remember i used to get so pissed watching him because he just go into the middle of the defense and he's just dribbling around then he comes back out you couldn't everyone was getting mad at him you frustrate defenses and that's a good thing but what do you do to prepare for your ball handling skills Right. Um, a big shout out to my uh, my dad and previous coaches because they've my dad has preached since I was little. Always keep your head up. Always keep your head up. You're dribbling. And when I was young, I'd turn the ball over more. And he's like, "That's all right. As long as you're keeping your head up, you're creating better habits for when you're older, and you can take care of the ball more." So that helped me out a lot. And when I uh, when I do my ball handling drills, I'm always I always got to keep my head up. I try and look even farther up than I would look like on a basketball court, like towards the hoop. Um, so I don't even see the basketball when I'm dribbling. Um, then to make it game-like, I uh, try and go with a, a game-like speed. So I go um, two dribbles to the right and just a, a quick crossover between the legs or behind the back. But as soon as I do that, I want to explode right as I make my move. And so that really helps in a, a game-like scenario because a lot of times – when you're doing ball handling drills, you're just kind of lazy with it. But if you really practice it like you're in a game and you're going full court, fast uh, fast break, that helped me out a lot. And just, um, yeah, keeping my head up always when I'm doing those uh, dribbling drills and doing it game like speed. I dig that. And I shout out to your dad. And like you said, the other coaches as well, like that, it's a, that's a really good piece of advice. So anybody who's listening, maybe a parent or a coach who's coaching younger athletes, um, developing those healthy habits while they're young, that will, you know, when consistently done that way, will help them out when they get older, just like you're seeing right here. McKay, you go to Meridian high school, uh, to my understanding from talking to your father a couple of times, your older brothers went to different high schools here in the Valley. You chose to go to Meridian. Um, and we've talked to a couple of your teammates. We've talked to coach Sainer before on the show about this, this culture and whatnot, but that's what I want to talk about as a Meridian alum. Um, it's one of the coolest things to see because that, that program was the bottom of the barrel trash program for a very long time after I graduated and it was kind of disgusting to watch. But as soon as you guys kind of came in that last four or five years now, it's, you just watch the growth of it. And I'm curious, why did you want to go to Meridian? And what was this experience like from the time you got there till now, like watching this build and being a massive vital piece to the growth of that? Gotcha. So I'm actually, I'm supposed to be in Rocky Boundaries, but um, I decided I wanted to, go play. I'd known um, Coach Sainer previously just from playing club basketball. I just known who he is and really liked him. And uh, so he was a big part of me going there because I knew he'd be a, a great coach for me. He pushed me. Uh, and also, I really wanted to be a part of um, bringing the program up because uh, Rocky's always been a great program. They're always going to be top of the top, you know. So I wanted to come in and really um, – change something and really do something with my high school career. So coming in and uh, coming in my freshman year, um, May JV and really just working and working and working and trying to um, bring the program up and uh, huge shout out to all my teammates too, especially these uh, past couple of years because we wouldn't be here today without having all my teammates around me and, uh, you know, just always being always uh, willing to work hard in practice. We didn't, we weren't easy on each other in practice. Me and Jason Fisher were always getting after each other. We were getting after Ledoux, our other point guard, and we were just always competing, always fighting. And Sander was always there to um, push us and make us better. So every year, I think 
everybody everybody in my class we just kept growing and growing and getting better and um as we got better and we stayed together we all saw the same vision we all knew what we could do and we just stayed with our vision and kept pushing kept going and here we are today we just kept coming i think it's so cool man um that's that's a really cool situation because yeah, like for those listening, I mean, McKay's in a, a different boundary, but he, he ended up going over to Meridian because you wanted to be part of something special where you could build and, and you got everyone to buy into that same concept. It sounds like that's kind of the common theme amongst a lot of the kids and and coach Saner for that matter. Like mm-hmm. it was to bring it up uh, Rocky mountain high school, who we've just mentioned has been the juggernaut here in the Valley, at least, uh, or a pretty big top dog, you know, that's especially right here in this rivalry. They've been the top dog for quite a while. So, you know, it's cool to watch you come over here and just take that, that program to the next level. Um, and, and just watch the growth. And you mentioned Drayson Fisher. We went, when I had, uh, Drayson on the show and he was talking, he did, he did name drop you. This was last year, like in the off season, he was, he was talking about how you guys push each other in practice, but I want to know like through your high school career outside of Drayson, because we, we know Dre, uh, Dre's a stud shout out Dre. I, I, I freaking love that guy. He's a, he's a bulldog dude. He's a pit bull. Mm-hmm. And that kid, again, you guys, I love watching you guys play. I would hate to be an opponent against you guys because I would hate the way he plays. I would hate the way you play. I would hate the way Brody plays. I, I mean, I, I would get frustrated, dude. And then obviously you got Joe's sniper in the corner. Like you can't stop that team. It's frustrating as heck. But I want to know outside of Drayson, and you just mentioned Ledoux as well, what teammate had the most, I guess, the, the biggest impact and why on you? I'm going to say um, Spencer Fair. He was a uh, he was a starting point guard my sophomore year, and about halfway through that year, I uh, moved up the starting lineup with him. But every day in practice, he really um, he really pushed me because I mean I was a small little sophomore and he was a he was a big kid. He was a, he was a senior and he was a big kid, so he'd bully me around and he he sh- he showed me what the physicality needed to be like to compete at the varsity level. And he really showed me um, how to be a starting point guard on a varsity level team. So I'd just say he he really showed me the ropes on my first year on varsity, how to how to run a team, kind of kind of thing, and the physicality. I love that. So for all those upperclassmen that might have some younger guys on the team listen to that, take note of that. Like you can lead them, uh, prepare them and leave the place better when you go than when it was, when you got there, like leave it in a better situation. That's what he did for you. And that's cool to hear because you, you probably had the same exact effect on other people as well. McKay, Cause you're probably doing the exact same thing, helping those other, you know, younger kids getting better, getting better, getting better. You know, you guys get to the state championship game. And I, I want to talk about this because what a lot of people don't realize one I, the Idaho center, it's a, just the state tournament in Idaho. It's three days, three games. And, uh, and, and coach Sanders said it best once. It's not necessarily always the best team that wins the state championship. It's the team that plays the best for three straight days. It is very difficult to play your a game for three straight games. I mean, in, in three days for that matter against high level competition, when you guys finally like Madison, I was a little bit scared about them and you guys were able to hold your own. But when you guys were going into the state championship, you're facing off against a young Lake City team, young but talented, very, very talented Lake City team. What was it like the day of the state championship and the night when you were coming out there getting ready for the tip off? Were you were there nerves or did you guys feel pretty confident? I actually want to know, not you guys, I want to know you. What was your thought like going in there? Because obviously we talked about you played at a high level, but I want to know what your feeling was when you got out there, like, okay, this is what we've played for. We're we're actually in the state championship game. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually, I mean, all three days. I was pretty nervous throughout the whole day because not just nervous, you're just like anxious to get to the game. You're waiting through the whole day because all three nights we played at around six o'clock. So we had to wait throughout the whole day. So I was just anxious to get to the game. But um, once I got out there on the floor, the nerves just went away for me. Like, um, and I was just really excited when uh, the tip off at, like, for uh, State Championship and they played the. Uh, uh, welcome to the main event thing. You can see, uh, I've watched the game multiple times, and you can see Davis and Brody both uh, laughing at each other just because they could feel how big the moment was and how cool it was just to be in that situation. 
And so I was right there with them. Like, it was just super cool. I've always wanted to play in a state championship my whole life. I've come to the state tournament every year since I was young. Always just wanted to be in that atmosphere. And once the game started, I wasn't nervous the, the whole game. Like, I was just confident in our team's ability to keep pushing. And even when we were down, it didn't really phase me either because I just knew we would keep fighting. And, yeah. Anyway, it was just a really cool experience. And once I stepped on the floor, I, all of my nerves went away and I was just ready to play. What's up, guys? I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's podcast, Idaho Premier Basketball. Idaho Premier is a club basketball program here out of the Treasure Valley. And they're teaching kids not just to be great athletes, but to be great people. I can tell you from firsthand experience, we are developing those young athletes to understand how to do things on the court and off the court. If you're interested in playing club basketball, go to IdahoPremierBasketball.com and check it out. So many amazing athletes have come through this club, have developed, and have had awesome opportunities outside of there. So please check it out again, IdahoPremierBasketball.com, the sponsor of today's podcast. I love that. And it's cool. I mean, everyone gets anxious. I mean, I hate that that feeling. Every athlete that's been there can understand that to some some degree. It's like when you play the late games, it's not just the, right before. It's the whole day. It's the night before you're trying to sleep. Then you wake up and it's like you can't even eat because you're kind of anxious or nervous. And you're like, well, I need to eat so I'm not sick at the game. You know, you're just, you, you're just trying to go through the motions. And yeah, I, I know that feeling where you're just like, ah, come on, I just want to get on the court. But once you get there, you know, you're one of those players and that team as a whole is it's full of players that are able to like, they don't get paralyzed by the fear, so to speak. Like sometimes people in those big moments, they, they're so anxious that it paralyzes them where as you, you are able to go out there and you're like, okay, it's we're, we're ready to go to go to work now. And, and I think that's super, super cool. Obviously you guys come, come back with a state championship um, and you get to replace so, yeah, I've always made jokes about it. When I went back to watch the game at Meridian, uh, the first game I got to see of you guys this year, unfortunately because of COVID, it was the Rocky Mountain game where you guys ended up losing. I was calling that game. But I got to go in there and see the trophy from when I was a senior when we got the Constellation right. trophy. It's got cobwebs all over it now. At least you guys got to bring something back that's going to be uh, worth putting there and taking care of and shining it, not letting the cobwebs get on it. Um, but touching the the state championship trophy and – and everything that, you know, the the pictures that you guys have seen from, you know, diff different media outlets, the Idaho Statesman and others, what was it feel like? What was the feel like, McKay, when you guys knew when, you know, near the end of the game, you kind of knew it was over. We're just waiting for the clock to run out. But when you finally got to hoist that trophy, you, you're holding it. What was it like for you? Talk to us about your emotions. Oh, it was crazy. Every, every single day of practice and all the sweat, from every practice and game throughout all four of my years, just all came together in that one moment. Like that was my last game and we won. Like, I mean, my last game of my high school career, I won. I can go out on win. And it was just so cool. I was so proud to bring a championship back to Meridian because we, deser we deserved it. All the people I've played with in my past couple of years, they deserved it as much as we did. They're part of us winning is, much as we were and it was just a great feeling to be able to win to win that trophy with uh all my teammates who i just trusted so much and cared so much about i just happy it was with them because we didn't have one single guy on our team that was all about them or had a big ego like we were just for each other and so it was just awesome to again win that trophy for all my teammates and for all the people in the past and everybody who supported us and it was just just a surreal feeling to all the fruits of my labor and a program's labor to just come out and end in that way. I love it, man. I can only imagine. I think it's super, super cool. It was the, it was truly like a storybook ending. It's one that I was always hoping for. Cause there's a lot of times, a lot of stories where the best team, the team that put in all the work, like you guys did, they don't end up on top. Uh, they might falter at the end or something. And sometimes they don't get it. But this one, I was just hoping and hoping and hoping that it would just all click. And you guys did it. You executed well and you got it. You got it done. I mean, last year we saw a very similar situation where a top dog should have walked through the state tournament and, you know, they faltered. You know, they, 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 they fell in the second round and, you know, Rocky didn't make it to, I mean, they were a nationally ranked team at one point last year and they, they, they couldn't get it done. So that's, that happens more often than not. So to see you guys be able to just, 
come through and actually execute every single game and get it done and you know all of that stuff i can just imagine how happy you must have been and, and happy emotional whatever but those are some big time memories plus you get to put a ring on it which is pretty sick to say uh, whenever that happens you should be flaunting that like yeah that's that's an amazing amazing accomplishment i do want to ask you a question too mckay as you got the the high school experience at a very very high level at meridian but you also are a club basketball player so you play club ball that's like you know it AU slash club ball, very similar situation here. And I want to know your thoughts on club basketball. Um, shout out Idaho Premier. I want to tell, you know, they're sponsoring this episode actually is, is one of the sponsors. You guys will hear that here with that, within the interview. But uh, Idaho Premier is the club that you're currently playing for. But I want to know just club basketball in general. Do you feel like that's helped you as well develop as an athlete? And if so, how has uh, club basketball helped you in, in your athletic journey through basketball? It's been huge for me. Club basketball has been a huge impact on my development and getting better. Um, I played club since third grade, I think. Started on slam. And just being able to um, travel to different places. Like we went to, um, the first time we went to Portland, we got killed a couple times. And it was just like an awakening, like, wow, like we're not, we're not that great right now. Like there's a lot we can improve on. And so just growing up and all those extra reps you get, like through school ball, you get a lot of reps, but it's a lot of more structured reps. Like you've got a specific role that you have to fill. You got plays you gotta run and you got one goal and it's to win. Where it, with club, you have another goal, which is to develop your game. So even if you lose that game, which you obviously don't want to do, you're still developing yourself and you can try out different things with your game during club that you wouldn't be able to do in school. They can help you develop. And uh, if you're successful with that, then you can bring that to school ball and just being in club just brings up so much more experience and has just helped me out so much. So I'd recommend that to anybody who wants to get better at basketball, joining club and traveling and playing in tournaments. It just helps you improve so much. I'm glad to hear that. One thing that I'm I'm realizing in the club game, I mean, I've covered club for a long time. But I'm finally being able to coach in club is, you know, sometimes you, you guys have currently this year, like I, you've been playing with a lot of the same guys a lot, but like sometimes you get a couple guys from your high school team that play in the club, but you get guys from all around. How do you think that's developed your game? Because I, I find that actually super beneficial in my opinion, while the chemistry might not always be a hundred percent. I feel that if you're able to play with other guys, that actually helps you get used to the next level because you learn different tendencies. And like you said, you get to be able to like work on other parts of your game. Cause maybe you have an athlete on, on, on your team that you don't normally have on your school team. So you get to utilize, they can do other skill sets and then it frees you up to do other things. But I'm curious your thoughts on that, being able to play with other players in the Valley, even on your own team, not necessarily the competition, but even on your own team, what's your thoughts there? Does that help? Um, have you found that beneficial or have you not even thought about that really? No, I actually have thought about that multiple times. I've talked about that with other people before playing with uh different people from different teams even from the sic is just super beneficial you get to play with them see what they're like see what their game's like you can kind of um shape how you play in that game kind of off of each other off of different people so if you um if you continue to play with different people year year in and year out you're gonna um learn how to play different ways you're going to have to how to be effective in different ways and you're just going to, want to play with all sorts of different players which is super important for anywhere where you, anywhere you could play you're always going to have to learn how to play with new people and how your skills are going to best suit the team with the people you have so yeah i'd say it's really beneficial to play with other people not from your uh, school team Super, super cool, man. I, I like hearing that from you too. Someone who's in, in the grind and, and working um, as a, as a player, you guys have quite the the club team. It's it's insane. I was telling people. I mean, you're competing at a national level this year. I mean, it's like crazy. Um, some of us are sitting there. I'm like, I don't know how any. I don't know how you guys even lose. Like the way you guys compete is just unbelievable. That's that is something to watch. If uh, people want to hear this and go check you guys out, the 18 U squad over there. It's it's it's. Uh, it's something special. You think Idaho doesn't have ballers? I beg to differ. That's you guys got some crazy good talent on that squad. Um, and it's obvious you guys have been putting in work for years 
and now like you get to to bring it all together for this one run in, in the spring. It's kind of cool. Um, I want to, as we're, as we're transitioning to the end of the interview here, um, a lot of people love to hear the successes, but a lot of people learn from failures. Um, and I want to know, you know, it, it's a weird question to ask, but what failures have you had? If you can pinpoint maybe one or two in, in your journey through basketball, a failure that maybe you have, you've had that's helped you as you learn from that failure, McKay, and uh, how you overcame that and how it helped you. Yeah. So the most recent one I can think of is the loss to Rocky this year. Um, it, I think it was a really good um, game for all of us. Obviously, we don't want to lose that game, but I think it really um, taught us that we weren't above anything. I don't think we really thought that, but even if we subconsciously thought that we were um, the best team in the league, like by far, like we were kind of humble a little bit. Um, we uh, had a new purpose after that. I had a new purpose after that to never feel like I'm losing again. And uh, I missed some, I missed a big free throw uh, in that game. And so that was huge to me, um, working on my free throws even more to not let that happen again. Like that failure really just motivated me to not let it happen again and keep um, get back to working hard in practice and just playing every minute. Like it's my last week to lose this game. Um, another one would be my junior year when uh, we lost first round in state. We got blown out by Rocky. And that again motivated me to um, work harder throughout the off season so that we wouldn't go out that first round. Cause I was, I was saying to lose, in the first round, not a, not only losing, but getting killed. And so uh, that really motivated me during the off season, throughout the next season to uh, work hard and compete and not let that happen again. So those were two of the big experiences that are most fresh in my mind. I love both of those examples. Um, it's basically, yeah, you got that sour taste in your mouth when, when things like that happen, but it's about how you react to those types of situations, which you obviously reacted in the right way by putting in the work um, and making sure that that same thing didn't happen again. Um, to your credit, though, and to the whole team's credit from that Rocky game, I said it to Coach Sainer that I've never seen a team in the state in the state tournament game last year, um, the first round, never seen a team shoot the way they shot in that game. I've a high school team. They came down the floor in that first round. And I kid you not, I swear they shot 90% from the field. And that's everyone. I'm like talking their posts are doing pull-up jumpers. I'm like, what in the frick? So like, I mean, you guys, you guys, you guys caught a juggernaut right there. That that was a juggernaut of a team and you guys fought. But um, I think obviously that prepared you well for the next season. Obviously you're coming home with a ring. Um, Now to all the, you know, all, all of your experience up until this point in your life, you know, up into winning a state championship, you're competing in club ball at a very, very high level, beating some big time teams, all this stuff. Now looking back through your life and you're kind of doing this, you know, grand, grand look at, at the, at your life. What is one of the biggest pieces of advice you'd give to athletes that are maybe, you know, younger coming up and, and you'd say, what, what has sports taught you that you would advise, you know, and, and now knowing what, you know, what, what's one big piece of advice you'd give to those uh, young athletes? I think the best piece of advice that I've gotten, I've learned throughout playing basketball is just compete, compete in everything. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're in practice, scrimmage, a game, consolation bracket. It's always the right thing to go out there and leave everything on the floor. Um, you're never going to gain anything just going out and going through the motions. So when you have the opportunity to go and play basketball and get on the court, Give it everything you have so that you can look back and be like, even if even if our season ended on a loss, I could look back and be like, hey, I did everything that I could have possibly done to give us the best chance of winning. And so I'd say just throughout your whole life, just always compete because that's the only way you're you're gonna get better is by competing every single minute, every time you're on the floor. I love that. That's a huge piece of advice. Um, so take that. If you're a younger athlete, listen. You know, McKay's been there. 
He obviously knows the road to success, as you guys have heard today. So take that. The last question I have for you. First off, I got to say, I, I might name the title of this podcast. Number 30 will do you dirty. I saw that sign. I think that is one of the coolest things. And like, it's like, there's no, for, for a quiet guy like yourself, silent assassin, number 30 will do you dirty. Sure will, man. You freaking know how to put the work in, you know how to, to dominate teams and yeah, it, you, you frustrate the opponents because you're so elite. So that's that sign. First, I have to say that I think that's going to be the name of this podcast title is number 30. Perfect. We'll do 30. Um, I thought that was that was beautiful, beautiful uh, sign there at the, the state tournament game. Um, what's next for McKay Anderson? We want to know, like, if, if you're looking at, you know, the next, you know, two to five years, what should we expect to see from McKay Anderson? Uh, so this summer I'm going on a mission for the LDS church. And then after that, I'm playing somewhere for college basketball. I've uh, talked to a couple schools. I haven't really, I haven't decided on where I want to play yet, but I also think over the next couple of years, I'm going to kind of figure out where I want to play, what I want to do. And, but you'll definitely see me playing basketball somewhat the next level. Um, but yeah. I haven't, I haven't picked my uh, my school yet, but I'll be I'll be somewhere playing basketball. Ooh, we're gonna see your name popping up, and I'm just telling you, man. Like having served a mission myself and coming back, like if you think McKay is dangerous now, wait till the wait till the dude's like 20, okay? And he's just hitting his peak genetically. Then then it's gonna be it's gonna be scary, man. Like number 30 will do you dirty. Thinks you think that's now? Wow, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be something uh, when you when you hit your genetic peak. That's going to be different, man. So I look forward to seeing it, McKay. We look forward to supporting you on your mission as well as in your basketball journey moving forward. And I uh, just want to say thank you for joining the Game Time Guru podcast, brother. It's been fun talking to you today, man. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. For all the listeners out there, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you can so we can get this out to more people. We've hit 91 different countries, 65,000 downloads. We're looking to expand that. Let's get that into 100 countries so 100 countries can hear McKay's story. you got to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, though, guys. So please do that. Share this with your friends and family, and we'll be coming to you next week with another interview. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars, and leave me a review, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.